This is a clicker. Thanks so much for having me come here to speak. And I'm speaking today on empowering individuals with autism for employment. My greatest struggle with autism wasn't my speech delay or even my sensory process issues, even learning difficulties, or even social interaction, though all these were a challenge for me. But my greatest challenge was employment. And I'm currently going on 15 years employment in the mental health field at the same hospital, Havenwick Hospital, and over 20 years as a part-time professor of theology at Destiny Ministry School. But this took years for me to get fully employed. I was actually in my mid-30s before I experienced gainful employment. Only 3% of people with autism in the United States are gainfully employed. And only 20% have a full-time job. Employment requires skills, personal connections, learning to market our ability and gifts for the workplace. And what I've noticed is a lot of people with autism, myself included, for years I was like this, we're like old Velcro shoes that are probably about 30 years old. We have a difficulty connecting with those around us. We have a difficulty marketing our ability, and this makes employment very difficult for us on the spectrum. The best description I ever heard of autism employment was a young adult who had a master's degree in social work, and I can call him Mr. Elson, although that wasn't his name. And he said this to me, we on the autism spectrum are the last to be hired and the first to be fired. I just lack the social graces to not say the wrong thing to the wrong person at the wrong time. And the only job I can maintain, he told me, is a taxi driver because I'm in the driver's seat and the clients are in the back and they're forced to hear my crazy stories. So if you're ever in an Uber and you hear the most unusual and unfiltered story, it just might be Mr. Elston in that driver's seat. And there's a picture of him. One of my friends on the spectrum described the workplace environment this way. It has many challenges, including doing things you may not want to do, in a place of you're not choosing, with people you may not get along with, in a way that you may not wish. And a lot of times, people with autism, they want routine. And in the workplace, usually, it's um, choreography chaos. There's all kinds of stuff going on, and it makes it very difficult for people on the autism spectrum. One young adult with autism, he described employment this way. My dad told me to get a job where I'd never get fired for sexual harassment. I'd never get fired for inappropriate behavior. So I got the perfect job. I got a job at a funeral home. All the clients are dead. And a lot of times with that difficulty being like those old Velcro shoes, we have difficulty to connect with people in a meaningful way. We have difficulty with eye contact. We have difficulty with even... Um, expressing our emotions. Sometimes we get very emotional. Most people are there like bottled water. They get shaken up in the workplace. Not much is happening. I was carbon made more like Mountain Dew. I got shaken up. Kaboom! Anyone want to do the do? <laughs> My parents empowered me for employment by teaching me life skills and helped me to develop a healthy self-image. And my father, with his Protestant work ethic, had this view of work. If a man shall not work, he shall not eat. 2 Thessalonians 3.10, and I like to eat, so I learned from a very early age how to work. I actually got my first job in God's waiting room. It was Bill Knapp's restaurant. And the reason it was called God's waiting room is on your birthday, you got that percent off your bill. So if you're 90 years old, you only had to pay 10% for your meal and 10% for your tip. It was a very good deal, but only old people went to that restaurant. And by having employment from an early age, it gave me that ability to market myself. It gave me that ability to express my gifts. And having a job, I learned things such as budgeting and saving money, dealing with angry customers, and making friends with coworkers. And my dad had a 
three-part rule to money that I earn. First 10% goes to God, and that's part of the budgeting. Next 10% goes to the bank, and 80% I could spend as I wanted. And he had a rule when I wanted to get a cool pair of shoes like you see up there, those air walks, is that I had to take the price of the air walks and minus them from the price of a pay less and then go from that 80% I had of money and use that money to buy the shoes I wanted. And by doing that, I quickly learned how to budget money. And to this day, I'm very frugal with my money, but also I have a lot of investments and I'm able to be successful with that. And a lot of people um, experience times of unemployment when you're on the spectrum. In 2005, I found myself unemployed and unable to find stable employment for three years. I was previously employed full-time at a large church and part-time as a youth pastor in a country church. And due to the Michigan downfall and recession, I lost both jobs. And the worst part was it was on the same day that that happened. It was when the automobile industry crashed. And for me, during that time, this is how my employment looked like. I hate my job. Oh, please. <laughs> so a lot of times, people would all to them, they don't enjoy their work. They find very stressful the work environment with sensory issues and everything else. And during that period of time, God spoke to me and, and told me the things I needed to do to be successful. And I was very down during this time of life. In fact, I was, had my master's degree and I was working at Corky's Skate Shop for five fifty an hour. And my dad would say, you have a master's degree. Why are you working only for five fifty? We paid good money for you to get educated. You had all these scholarships. You graduated at 4.0 from Oral Roberts University, a prestigious university. And it's interesting, God has a karyos moment, which means his divine appointed time. And look at the date when he spoke to me. 4-13-06. He spoke to me right during Autism Awareness a Month, or all, now we call it Autism Acceptance Month. And he spoke these words to me. Seek first to be understood, then to understand. I used to be like Donald Trump. When an idea came in my mind, I'd spew it out. I was Trump on Twitter. And God said, slow down. Think before you talk in the workplace. No monotone. Ron, you sound like a robot. First girl I ever asked out on a date, she said these words. How come you have no inflection in your voice? You sound like a transformer. So I thought I'd be cute. I sound more than meets the eyes. But I still didn't get a date with that girl. Timing of words. A person finds joy in amp reply, and how good is a timely word? Proverbs 15, 23. And I learned how to delight people in my conversation. If I knew someone went to was from Cleveland, I'd show them a Cleveland Indians hat and ask them if they've ever been to a Cleveland Indian game. And I learned to first seek to understand, then to be understood, and to be able to delight people in conversation. This has really helped me with employment. And have eye contact. I used to have zero eye contact. I'd look down. But I learned to look people in the eye, and I found that as I did that, I became more and more comfortable. And as that became a routine... Now it's just second nature for me. And the most important one is this, number six. Pray and seek the Lord. And I sought the Lord to give me advice on how to better be able to interact with people and be employed. And I also had difficulty with saying TH and L words. And I learned by practice and by being cognitively aware to be able to do that. And then finally, Develop a strategy for people skills. And the way I did this is I found a friend named Steve Jones who had great people skills. And as I hanged out with him, it rubbed off on me. Proverbs 27, 17 says, As iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. And I was able to develop that. But most people, these abilities come natural. They know their strengths, they know their limitations, and they accommodate using their strengths for a limitation. Here's an example. I'm a great communicator. My job in the mental health field, I lead groups every day and I'm communicating. I spoke to 3,500 students in 10 days in public schools during the last 
10 days for autism acceptance months. But my limitation is I'm a horrible handyman. So when my wife was pregnant, we had a thing called a baby shower. What did she get? A crib. Now, I couldn't put it together, so I had her put it together. If I would have put it together, I would have gotten a knock from Child Protective Services asking why I'm inventing a new prop for the Saw movie. When my, a couple years ago, Christmas came, being a horrible handyman, I got my wife an electrical fireplace. I had her put it together. I didn't want, again, for there to be a, a fire and channels seven or eight or one of the stations that come and say three people are missing an electrical fire an autistic man put together an electrical fireplace hopefully at the 11 o'clock news we'll have better results but what i do with my strength is communication so i earn a living from that and my limitations handiwork so when i get 3,000 miles on my car i don't just let it break down I go and get an oil change using my strength communication for my limitation where, again, it's the area of handyman work. So we adapt and accommodate using our strengths. And a lot of people with d disabilities, they have great strengths with autism. Memory, as I can do 15,000 voices. But we don't know how to market our gifts. There's a band. They were really great. They knew their strength was music, and they knew their limitation was audience. They'd go to bars and sing. There was no one in the, in the parking lot. And one day they're driving in their tour bus, and they see a sign, Naked Ladies, and they notice the bars are filled. So what do they do? The lead singer says, we're going to change our name. He changed his name to Bare Naked Ladies. He marketed where his limitation was, and you know what happened? We've all heard of that band today. And that's where people with disabilities have a lot of difficulty is we don't know how to market our gifts and our talents. I received employment in the mental health field in 2008, and I learned through my occupational struggles five le valuable lessons to help people with disabilities seeking employment and hoping to remain employed. And I'm going to go through these really quick. Most people find employment by personal contacts, that's number one. Number two, employment comes through experience. Number three, find a mentor in your workplace to help you learn your job. Number four, take advantage of every opportunity. Number five, know your own limits at work. Most people find employment by personal contacts. While I was working at Comfort Keeper at a nursing home, I overheard a lady say, I work at Havenwick Hospital. And I said to her, I've turned my resume twice in there, and I've never heard anything back. She said, that's because we only hire people who know someone who works here. You come tomorrow to Havenwick at 10 a.m., ask to talk to Tori, my supervisor, and you'll be hired on. And I went the next day, and guess what? 15 years later, I got gray hair. You know why? Because I got hired at Havenwick with aggressive, psychotic patients, but I love the job. Number two, employment comes through experience. I know what you're thinking. How can my friend or how can my child who has a disability ever get experience if no one's willing to hire him on? Well, here's the good news. Begin as a volunteer. When I worked at Oakland Christian Church, I volunteered there for a year working with the different ministries. And after a year of volunteering, I ended up getting hired on full time and I ended up working there two years. So a lot of times volunteer work gets you those skills and it gets you in the door so you can market where you're good at and they see you're a hard worker, they're going to hire you on. Number three, find a mentor in your workplace to help you learn your job. A mentor can be a co-worker or a supervisor who is willing to help teach you the job and encourage you. And my mentor was Dr. Jack Van Empey. When he died two years ago, they mentioned he had an article in the New York Times that was two-page long obituary about how influential he was on the world. He spoke to over 10 million people. But the first time I met him, I was a senior in high school, and he spewed off verses like a Tommy gun. And I gave him word reference on every one. 
And he said, how old are you, son? And I said, 18 years old. He said, when I was 18, I only had 500 Bible verses memorized. How many do you have memorized? And I said, over 2,500. He said, when you get in college, you're going to be an intern for me. And I was an intern for him. I got to work under him. One time he messed up on his show, and he said, I can't remember the verse, and hit his head like that. And I said, it's Psalms 8.2. Matthew 21, 16, from the lips of children and infants, you have ordained praise. But I was able to learn from him how to communicate, how to be able to speak in front of large audiences, and be able to share the gospel. And I also got to hear his struggles and learn from that. And then the fourth one is take advantage of every opportunity. Working at Havenwick Hospital, they're part of a fortune 500 company called UHS and every um, semester they'll give you a thousand dollars of free education so you know what I did I went back to college got a second degree in psychology and that psychology degree it empowered me to do this write three nationally published books on autism so taking advantage of opportunities means if they're having a seminar if they're having um, to reaper or being able to get paid for your tuition, take advantage of that. Develop those skills. If an ax is dull, more strength is needed. With skill comes what? Success. And that's one of the things I've done over the years. I've taken advantage of those. When I meet well-known people, I ask, hey, can I write an article about you? And all of a sudden I have a connection there, and that marketing opens up doors so I get first on Google. And my honey badger... And Prairie Dog, by taking advantage of opportunities in 2002, Prairie Pup got to meet Muhammad Ali. The most unusual place he's ever been wasn't when I went to Madagascar with him and spoke. It wasn't when I went to Israel and spoke with him. But when I met Kurt Armstrong Booger from Revenge of the Nerds, he's been up that nose where the finger was in Revenge of the Nerds. I've been able to take advantage of that. And number five, and this is the most important one, I think, of all for people who are gainfully employed on the autism spectrum, which is only 3%, know your limitations. I was offered a supervisor position at the hospital I work at. And they were only going to pay me $2 extra an hour, and I turned it down because I know my strength is what? Communication, and I know my limitation is handiwork, but also leadership skills. I like to do things on my own. In fact, when I was in college, people wanted to be in my group project because they knew I'd do all the work because I knew I'd do it right and I knew I'd get a 4.0 and I don't like unknown variables, people I'm working with. So knowing my limitations, I turned it down. And that's what's really important is people with autism need to learn what their strengths are. They need to know what their limitations are, and they need to adapt using their strengths to overcome. And when we learn to do that, we're going to be gainfully employed. And I also do this as I say, does this relate to my gifts? And does this relate to my talents and to my calling from God? And if it does, then I'm going to take the opportunity. If it doesn't relate to what my calling is or my gifting, I'm going to turn it down. I'm going to in with these thoughts. Autism has caused me to experience much frustration and disappointment in the workplace, like making five fifty an hour at Corky's with a master's degree before I got hired full time in the medical field. But it also has caused me to be persistent, refusing to give up. And now I'm seeing the fruits of perseverance can produce. A wife, family, career, and three nationally published books. And I'm going to end on this thought. By perseverance, the snail made it on the ark. So if things seem not to be going well, even if you're slow as a snail or a tortoise, if you're going in the right direction, God's got you. Thanks so much, and see you at the table. <laughs>